Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. Now, as far as Wi-Fi calling is concerned, the key architectural model is based on the untrusted NUN 3GPP access, using GTP, the GPRS tunneling protocol, on the S2B interface. As such, we're going to base the remaining videos as this module on this particular architectural configuration. So therefore, looking at our untrusted NUN 3GPP access network, what we're going to do is take a look at the key network elements and their associated functions before moving on and looking at the protocol stacks and the relevant reference points. So we can see then on the diagram our untrusted NUN 3GPP access network. So let's just take a moment to focus on the key network elements and their associated functions. Well, to begin with then, we have our mobile phone and the access point. This is our Wi-Fi connection, with both devices supporting a Wi-Fi radio in accordance with the IEEE 802.11 specifications. Therefore, our mobile phone needs not only a Wi-Fi radio, but this will be in addition to the standard cellular radios supporting LTE, UMTS and GSM, etc. Now, because our Wi-Fi network is considered to be insecure, and therefore we are looking at an untrusted NUN 3GPP access network, it really doesn't matter how the phone connects through. In other words, the Wi-Fi network may exist within a coffee shop, a hotel, possibly in the work environment, or even using the Wi-Fi connection at home. All we we'll require is an IP address, which we can then use to register with an EPDG, our Evolve Packet Data Gateway. Now, if you look at the actual mobile phone itself in a little more detail, we can see that it will also contain a connection manager and the connection manager will be responsible for things like network discovery, discovering the appropriate Wi-Fi networks within the vicinity. Likewise, it will also take part in the process of network selection, picking the best Wi-Fi network through which to register. In addition, we've also got traffic prioritization and routing. This is the connection manager determining which traffic will be sent via our 3GPP-based network, either through Wi-Fi and then out onto our uh, core network, or whether we're directly going through things like LTE. Or possibly, we may be using non-seamless offload, in which case the traffic will be sent directly to the internet and there will be no involvement by our mobile service providers network. And finally, we have authentication verifying that the mobile itself is permitted access onto that network. The next network element is that of the EPDG, the Evolved Packet Data Gateway. And we can see here it too has a number of responsibilities. The first of these is that of the IPsec tunnel management. Because we're operating on an untrusted non 3GPP access network, we are going to be assuming that the Wi-Fi connection is insecure. As such, we're going to build an IPsec tunnel between the mobile and the EPDG. Therefore, traffic passing across this IPsec will be protected through encryption and integrity protection. In addition, we also have bearer mapping. We can see here across the SWU interface between the mobile and the EPDG, we have our IPsec tunnel, which will be carrying our user plane traffic. However, across the S2B interface, there may exist a number of GTP tunnels, supporting a number of different EPS bearers. Remember, we require different EPS bearers if we wish to support different qualities of service. In other words, traffic based on the internet, Wi-Fi calling traffic, the voice itself, or things like IMS signaling. Therefore, it becomes the job of the EPDG to map traffic coming down these various GTP tunnels onto the IPsec pipe. And likewise for uplink traffic, we also need to incorporate an uplink traffic flow template. This is a set of rules telling the EPDG which traffic needs to be sent at which of the GTP tunnels. 
In addition, we also have the ability for lawful interception. Again, for the security services to gain access to the traffic passing across our Wi-Fi network. And finally, we have accounting. A responsibility of the EPG is to collect records which can again be passed on to billing functions. The next element then, one associated with the way our traffic will flow, is that of the PDN gateway. Now the PDN gateway here is our anchor point. Regardless of whether the information will flow across our Wi-Fi network in this situation or whether it flows across LTE. And therefore the functions of our PDN gateway will be the same. So, what does the PDN gateway need to do? Well, one of its functions is that of policy enforcement. Ensuring when traffic arrives at the PDN gateway, the appropriate policy to which the traffic is associated is actually carried out. This is typically mapping it to the appropriate quality of service, to whichever is the correct GTP pipe, in this case running across the S2B interface. In a similar manner, it will also have to take place or deal with packet filtering and screening. Deep packet inspection so it can identify the particular traffic flow and therefore map it to the appropriate bearer. Screening in case of actually not permitting certain traffic into the network, stopping spam for example. It will also be involved in counting, again generating records which can be passed on to billing systems, in addition to actually the allocation of the IP address which the mobile will actually use. Again, the mobile will be allocated an IP address which we will use across both the LTE network and, in this case, our Wi-Fi network. And finally, we also have the ability here to also support lawful interception. So, as we now move away from the network elements which deal with the actual traffic, our user plane, we also have a number of elements which we're going to see really take place in our control of the system. And the first of these is our home subscriber server. This is our master database which we use across the cellular network, storing subscriber information and subscriber profiles. Here we can see it's our central repository for such things to do with authentication as well as dealing with our profile. The next element is the AAA server, the authentication, authorization and accounting server. Now this plays a critical role during the establishment of the IPsec tunnel for it's here that we will also carry out the authentication of the subscriber. Using a process termed EAP aka, here we'll see that the AAA server actually authenticates the subscriber and ensures that only legitimate subscribers gain access to the network. The next element is the PCRF, or the Policy Charging and Rules function. This is actually part of an architecture term PCC, Policy Charging Control. And in terms of our Wi-Fi calling, it really has two key functions. The first of these is to ensure that the correct policy is running across the network. What we mean by this is that, for example, voice information is dealt with accordingly as it arrives at the PDN gateway, differentiating this from, say, signaling or internet traffic. The second element deals with the accounting. And here we can see that the policy charging rules function may need to interwork with both our online and offline charging mechanisms. The final function then we need to look at is that of the access network discovery and selection function. This sits alongside our untrusted non 3 gpp access architecture that we've seen previously and is used to provide additional information to the mobile to aid it in the process of network discovery and selection. In other words, the information can either be pushed down to the mobile or the mobile can request it using a standard pull methodology. So, what sort of information then is contained in our access network discovery and selection function? Well, to begin with, we have our access network discovery information. What this is, is fundamentally a list of potential Wi-Fi networks that exist in the vicinity. This could be represented in terms of their SSIDs, their service set identities, or the network names, or the particular frequencies the Wi-Fi access points may be using. In addition, we have our WLAN selection policy. This enables the phone to select the most appropriate Wi-Fi network from a potential number. In other words, we can give priority to certain Wi-Fi networks which may have a roaming agreement with our mobile service provider. 
We also have the Inter APN routing policy. This enables us, or to inform the mobile, which traffic should be sent across which networks. For other words, does some traffic get sent across the LTE network, other traffic goes across Wi-Fi, or possibly using our non-seamless offload, where the traffic will be sent directly to the internet itself. The fourth policy deals with our inter-system mobility policy. And this is really aimed at phones which are not capable of operating Wi-Fi and cellular simultaneously. So our inter-system mobility policy will simply indicate whether traffic should be sent across the LTE network or the Wi-Fi network. And finally, we have our inter-system routing policy. And this is similar to that of our inter-APN routing policy in that it will tell the mobile which particular traffic flows need to be sent across which networks. However, this will not be restricted to certain uh, PDN networks or APNs. Different flows associated with the same APN could be delivered across different access networks. So then, the final thing we need to look at are the different protocol stacks and reference points operating across our untrusted non-3GPP network. Here we can see on the screen then, we're going to deal with the control plane to begin with. So operating across the SWU interface, we can see that we have IKEV2, the Internet Key Exchange version 2 operating. This is used to set up our security associations across the interface between the mobile and the EPDG. Whereas across the S2B interface between our Evolve Packet Data Gateway and our PDN Gateway, we will be using the services of GTP V2C. This is the control protocol we use to set up our GTP tunnels across the S2B. Moving on to the user plane then, where we can see that our traffic will be tunneled across our SWU interface within the IPsec tunnel. Whereas over the S2B, again, we'll be using the services of GTP, but this time the uh, user plane variant. That just then leaves us with the various protocols operating out towards the AAA server, the HSS, and our policy charging rules function. Well, these will utilize the services of diameter. And diameter, we can see, will either sit on TCP, our transmission control protocol, or SCTP. So then, in summary, what have we seen during the video? Well, we focus very much on the untrusted non-3GPP access model. And in so doing, we've seen a whole host of different network elements. Some involved in the actual transfer of information from the mobile to the access point to the EPDG and out through the PDN gateway, whereas other network elements have really been dealing with signaling and control, be that the home subscriber server, the AAA server, and our policy charging rules function. And finally, we looked at our ANDSF, our access network discovery and selection function, which provided the mobile with additional policy in terms of discovering the appropriate Wi-Fi networks and selecting the correct ones. It also provided information about which data flows should be sent across which networks. And finally, we looked at the various protocol stacks and reference points. Here, in terms of our IKE v2, which was our control protocol operating between the mobile and the EPDG, whereas we had GTP v2c, again, operating across the S2B interface. Finally, for control out to the AAA server, the home subscriber server, and our policy charging rules function, we're going to utilize the services of Diameter. Need to know more? Why not visit our store, where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.